Today I've got an interesting sum to look at. So in particular, we'll look at the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of two to the n over two to the two to the n plus one. Now I'd like to point out that via the theory of geometric series, which we use all the time on the channel, we know that the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of u to the a n plus b is equal to u to the b over one minus u to the a. And that's because this has a starting term of u to the b, and then it has a common ratio of u to the a. And of course, this only converges when the absolute value of u is less than one. But let's notice that in the exponent here, we have a n plus b, which is a linear polynomial. So you might say, well, what happens if we've got more than a linear polynomial in the exponent? Well, that actually turns into something quite tricky. But let's notice that not only do we have more than a linear polynomial, but we've got this rational function. In fact, this looks a little bit like something called a Lambert series, although we won't use the fact that this is related to Lambert series. Okay, so what we'll do is actually prove this stronger claim, and this stronger claim will specialize to, well, find the value of this quite easily. So we'll show that for absolute value of x less than one, we have the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of two to the n times x to the two to the n over one plus x to the two to the n is equal to x over one minus x. Okay, so let's get going. So I'll just copy this sum down. And I'll take this numerator over one plus x to the two to the n, and I'll expand it as a geometric series. So notice expanding it as a geometric series means that our common ratio is minus x to the two to the n, just based off of what we have over here. Okay, so that allows us to write this as follows. So I'll have the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of two to the n times x to the two to the n. And then expanding the rest of this, we'll have the sum as m goes from zero to infinity of minus x to the two to the n all raised to the m power. Again, because that's our common ratio. Now let's put this stuff together a little bit. So we'll have the double sum. So the outer sum is n going from zero to infinity and the inner sum is m going from zero to infinity. And then we'll be left with minus one to the m and then we'll have x to the two to the n, and then we'll have x to the power two to the n times the quantity m plus one. So that's from combining those two x terms there. And now we're gonna split this into cases. So the first case is quite short, so I think we can fit it in right here. So that first case will be the case when n is equal to zero and m is even. So let's write that here. Case the first is n equals zero and m is even, which means we can write m as two times k. Okay, so let's see what this condenses to in that case. So we'll end up with the sum as k goes from zero up to infinity. We have minus one to the two k but that will give us just plus one. We'll have two to the n, but n is equal to zero, so we just have two to the zero, which is one. And then we'll finally have x to the two k plus one. And again, because n is equal to zero, this cancels out, or this turns into one, I should say, and then we have two k plus one there. But notice that's a geometric series, just like this over here, where we've got this linear polynomial in the exponent. So now we could write this as x over one minus x squared. That'd probably be a nice suitable way to write that. Okay, so that's our first case, but that is not nearly all of the terms here. So that means we need to look at the other terms. So that covers the case when n is equal to zero and all of the other cases when n is bigger than or equal to one can be combined together.
So notice that if n is bigger than or equal to 1, then that tells us that every power of x is even. So let's write that down. So every power of x is even. We can see that because if n is bigger than or equal to 1, we have a power of 2 right here. Then what we'd like to do is to take this power of 2 times m plus 1 and rewrite it as a power of 2 times an odd. So let's do that. So we'll take 2 to the n times m plus 1 and write it as 2 to the r times an odd number. And we can always do that just by factoring out all of the possible powers of 2 by whatever we have here. Now that r may in fact be equal to n, but it may be larger. That would be the case when m plus 1 itself is even. So let's notice that n is between 1 and r. And it's only equal to r if m plus 1 is this odd number right here. So that motivates us to split this into two cases. So that first case will be if n is from the set uh, 1, 2, all the way up to r minus 1. But if that's the case, then m plus 1 is gobbling up some of the evenness of what's left over, which means m plus 1 is even. So m plus 1 is even, which tells us that m is odd, which tells us that minus 1 to the m power is equal to minus 1. Okay, good. And then the other case if this is if n is equal to r. So notice that, like I said, n is bound between 1 and r. So if it's strictly less than r, we get this set up where we have minus 1 to the m is negative 1. But if n is equal to r, then that means n is gobbling up all of the evenness that is going on here, which tells us that m plus 1 is odd, which tells us that m is even, which tells us finally that minus 1 to the m is plus 1. Okay, so that's looking good. That tells us whether or not this object right here takes the value of plus 1 or minus 1. So now we can dive in and look at the coefficient of x to the 2 to the n times m plus 1. So it's the coefficient of this term right here. So notice it'll be equal to minus 1 times 2 to the 1 plus 2 to the 2 all the way up to 2 to the r minus 1. So that comes from the case when n is here. And then it'll be plus 2 to the r. And that'll be the case when n is like this. But let's be really careful here because it turns out we missed something. Maybe post in the comments if you know what we've missed. That would be a good like test for how closely you're paying attention. Let's notice in this case right here, where n came from this set 1 to r minus 1, we saw that m was odd. Okay. But notice that this first case up here only dealt when m was even. So that means the case when n is equal to 0 and m is even is smashed into this case right here. So we have to put a 0 as a possibility down here. But if we have a 0 as a possibility down here, then we have a 2 to the 0 as part of, part of our coefficient. Okay, so now that's looking good. But now there's a standard rule for a finite geometric series that tells us that all of this stuff right here adds up to 2 to the r minus 1. That's attached to a minus sign, which flips that minus to a plus and uses this 2 to the r to cancel that 2 to the r, meaning that this coefficient in the end is equal to 1. So that means the coefficient here is 1 whenever we have an even power of x. So when we had an odd power of x, the coefficient was 1. When we had an even power, the coefficient was also 1. So this case right here, which may be our uh, box in red, will go down here. So we'll have the sum as k goes from 1 up to infinity of x to the 2k, which sums up to x squared over 1 minus x squared. So we have something like that.
Okay, so why does that start at one instead of zero? Well, it starts at one instead of zero because if it were to start at zero, we would have a constant term here, but there are no constant terms in this original series. You can easily see that by just construction. Okay, so now let's see what we have. If n was bigger than or equal to one, or if m plus one was even, then this thing collapsed to what I'm underlining in red. Whereas if n was equal to zero and m was even, so which means m plus one is odd, everything collapsed to this. And those are the only two cases. So what we'll do from here is take these two cases and add them together. So we're adding those two cases together and then it's a simple matter of just doing a little bit of algebraic manipulation and that will end with x over one minus x. I'll let you guys do that. Okay, so now I'll erase this now that we have this claim taken care of and we'll specialize that claim to find a value for our series. Hey everyone, before we finish this video, I'd like to take a moment to thank our patrons. The channel is possible because of their generous support. We'd like to turn off the ads on my second channel, Math Major, but to do so, we need to reach our goal of $1,000 per month on the Patreon. This will allow more people to access a higher quality experience and spread ad-free math education. So if you can chip in even a couple of bucks to help us reach our goal, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath or click the link in the description. If you can contribute $10 or more, you'll have your name in the credits at the end of each video. And if you can't contribute money, then please share and like this video. It really does help. Also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, but you've made it this far, you should go click the subscribe button. Okay, back to the video. Now, after all that work, we're ready to quickly finish this. And we'll quickly finish this by specializing this claim to the case when x is equal to 1 half. So we'll set x equal to a half here, and then we'll set x equal to a half here. So let's see what that leaves us with on this left-hand side. We'll end up with the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of two to the n times one half to the power two to the n over one plus one half to the power two to the n. And then over here on the right hand side, we'll end up with a half over a half. In other words, the number one. But now let's take this left hand side and multiply the numerator and the denominator by two to the two to the n. And so in the numerator, that'll cause this to cancel with this. And then in the denominator, we have to multiply it through. So this rightmost term will be canceled down to the number one, and this leftmost term will just clearly build up. So we'll end up with the sum as n goes from zero to infinity. We have two to the n left in the numerator, two to the two to the n plus one left in the denominator is equal to one. And that would be a final value for our series. So I think I mentioned earlier that this looks somewhat like something called the Lambert series. So in fact, I did a video previously on the channel about Lambert series. It should be on the screen right now if you'd like to check it out. And that's a good place to stop.